earlier asking Virginia and New Jersey residents to vote, uh, Democrat Terry McAuliffe is struggling in a state that you won by 10 points. Do you, see, do you see his problems as a rebuke of your presidency? And could this signal your real losses for Democrats in the midterms? We're going to win. Yeah, I snapped the bill that I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. But, you know, teach, I get really tired. I'm going to ban critical race theory. That is like us banning the ghosts. Right. There are no ghosts. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So no we loud. can say, you know what, 7 p.m. we're banning the ghosts. There are no ghosts. There isn't critical race theory talk. <laughs> hey, welcome in. Well, remember back in uh, 2016 when Trump won, uh, Van Jones called that a white lash. Because unfortunately for the modern leftists, this is the only way they can see the world. Everything is racial struggle to them. In other words, if you don't do what they want you to do, uh, you're racist. But we have a new word, woke lash. And it seems to mean two different things. And this has been sparked by, by Youngkin winning the governorship in Virginia, where he wasn't supposed to win. Here's from Reuters. Republicans capture Virginia governorship, dealing setback to Biden. Youngkin was supposed to lose there. He was not supposed to win. That was supposed to be a very safe, that was supposed to be very safe for McAuliffe. And although the word woke clash has been around for a little bit, this has given it real momentum. Let's go to Twitter. So one meaning of it seems to be that it's a, a backlash against wokeism. Here's one tweet. Americans in red and blue states are fed up with woke nonsense. Cancel culture and institutions pushing liberal orthodoxy. Tonight, the woke clash was awakened. We are the majority. Here's this, Matt Schlapp to Newsmax. Young Kinwin was a woke lash. Quote, I would say tonight is about a revolt from parents, moms, and dads who say, you know, I was okay with this idea of taking care of people, have a social safety net, compassion, being open to immigration and stuff, but I'm not okay with them destroying my kids and propagandizing them and destroying the economy and saying America is a crappy country. I mean, I don't know why they thought this woke politics would be popular, but there was a woke clash tonight. So clearly meaning it's a bad clash against wokeism. So great, I'm all for that. I'm horrified by their crackpot racial theories and, and gender Marxism. So good, I'm, I'm happy for that. But the other thing that I'm also happy for is the other way that it's being used. And that is the backlash by the woke against things they don't like happening. Here, from Melissa Tate, full meltdown. Democrats are finding out suburban women don't like their kids being called evil racists. Gee, woke clash. Here's an excellent example. This is from Cher. Uh, this is all full caps, of course, uh, with lots of emojis for some reason. Held my tongue long enough, but F it. Do Dem needs a house to fall on their sisters before they see what's coming? And then it's just blah, 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 supremos, uh, everybody's going to die. And above it, the woke lash already have the liberals losing their minds. So this would be an example of woke lash from a woke person. Basically, just the hysterical response that uh, woke people have to, again, anything they don't like. How about this? Uh, Jamel Hill, formerly of ESPN. It's not the messaging, folks. This country simply loves white supremacy. Yeah, so that's not hysterical wokeness at all. Not at all. White supremacy is indefatigable. The truth is both personal and political this week. Long way of saying, I'm tired. No, you're just dumb. This one isn't crazy. Uh, white women voters are foot soldiers of white supremacist patriarchy. You know, I've said it before. I'm going to say it right now. Please go and live in Saudi Arabia for a year or two, please. Then come back and you can start tweeting again. In their majority, they voted GOP long before Trump because they benefit from white supremacy and they undergird right-wing populism as voters and candidates. And that's because uh, white women in Virginia swung by 15 points for Youngkin. And this neon-haired gremlin who's probably childless, let's face it, I mean, this is just completely hysterical. This is, I would call this a woke clash, if, if we're using it in that sense. Here's a Dean Obadala, who's just a dreadful human being, as far as I can tell. Dear media, Republican voters are not excited by the issue of education, 
Republican voters are excited by the issue of white supremacy. These people are out of their freaking minds. I think it's because they just don't have anything else. I mean, look at the state of the United States right now under Biden. I mean, maybe inflation also has something to do with it. Maybe crime has something to do with it. I don't know. I mean, maybe trying to get the, the students in the schools to either hate each other or themselves over the way they were born. Maybe that's got something to do with it. Oh, I sorry, I forgot. They're not teaching CRT in schools. The, the, the parents are all hallucinating. Maybe like literally everything else has something to do with it as well. But anyway, well, here's another example of woke clash being a, a woke person's hysterical reaction. As CNN commentator Van Jones said Glenn Youngkin's win in the Virginia governor's race could be evidence of the emergence of the Delta variant of Trumpism. Quote, when this election is over, we will know, have we seen the emergence of the Delta variant of Trumpism? Quote, in other words, Youngkin, same disease, but spreads a lot faster and can get to a lot more places. I don't know, maybe you shouldn't try and teach weird, crazy racial theories in school. Maybe, you know, K through 12 schools shouldn't be um, deconstructing whiteness. Because you can call it CRT, you can call it whatever you want, but that's what they're doing. And another thing, when you're comparing other people to viruses, maybe you're the bad guy. But whether or not, you know, his hysterical reaction there is woke clash or whether woke clash is just a backlash against wokeism, I don't really care because it's hilarious either way. And I think most people of any background don't want to be seen as some faceless member of an identity group. I think most people probably want to be seen as individuals. So anyway, I mean, whatever it means, either way, it's great. But that's all I got to say about that. Please subscribe, like, and share. That really helps me out. If you just like to listen, there's the podcast, Radio Baloney. It's on pretty much every platform. If you look for it, you will find it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.